Uh, I'm going to give you a little background on myself and uh, because we come from different places and uh, different situations, but right now we're all here together. And, and how I got here is that, uh, let's see, after four years of the military, uh, last two and a half years served in Paris, France, which is nice. Uh, during that time, uh, and that was in 1956, uh, I, I, I got out of there. Uh, well, right after those four years in the military, I came back to America and immediately heard about Islam, but it was a nation of Islam, and I became a member of the nation of Islam. And one thing I learned through the years of being there and up until now, uh, because I walked with all the notables and met them and talked to them and with them uh, from, you know, Malcolm X, uh, with him a lot, uh, Marius Farrakhan, uh, Wallace D. Muhammad at that time, who was my first minister in Islam, Elijah Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Ali, who I know, know very well, uh, and also then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So these are the people that I was greatly with during that period of time. And it's one thing I learned during that period of time and now that I found out or know what Al-Islam is and what Al-Islam is not. And that was one thing. The second thing is what happened when uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, and at that time, as, when he was assassinated, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad immediately issued a statement to all his ministers that in their speeches, in their talks, do not mention anything about this assassination. And none of them did. But, you know, in an interview uh, during that time, Malcolm X, he mentioned uh, when pressed by the reporters that this was like chickens coming home to roost. And that statement, you know, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad set him down immediately because he realized with his understanding and knowledge that that one statement, because of the fact that this was a man that was loved by greatly all Americans and they almost worshiped him. And he know by saying something like this, he uh, jeopardized the life and security and safety of all members of that organization. So that's why he did that. And what we see today is a global example of this type of actions and deeds by people who are doing things, you know, and saying things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, but they don't realize the consequences of what they're saying and that they're opening doors for a lot of innocent people to be uh, hurt or killed and other things. So our book teaches us not to trade or exchange evil for evil, because then there's only more evil in the world. So we always taught to, you know, do a good deed. If someone does evil to you, do, do a good deed. And that good deed will not only remove the evil, but it will work well in the world. And I see my time is up. I think so. Is that right? Thank you very much.